afternoon. My name is Thomas Kelly, Director of Retention, and this is Welcome to Worcester State. Welcome to Worcester State is an online web show where each week we talk about the important topics that are a part of a new student's transition to Worcester State. This week I'm very excited to be joined by Assistant Dean and Director of Student Accessibility Services, Fran Minocchio. Fran, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here again. Awesome. So Fran, can you tell everyone at home a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Student Accessibility Services here at Worcester State? Sure. So I'm in my eighth year at uh, Worcester State in the Student Accessibility Services office. Um, I'm really fortunate to have a job that I love. I love coming to work every day and have great colleagues to work with and um, really enjoy working with the students who we serve. Awesome. So as you know, um, we have some pre-planned questions. So what exactly is Student Accessibility Services? Student Accessibility Services, the office on campus that addresses the needs of students with disabilities. Now, TK, disabilities can be a tricky word. So disabilities includes medical conditions such as diabetes, cancer, Crohn's disease, and other medical conditions. It includes learning disabilities, attention deficit disorder, sensory issues such as hearing or vision or mobility impairments, as well as mental health issues. So our office serves students with any number of those conditions. We currently serve um, over 550 students, most of whom have invisible disabilities. So our office is the place for students to come to if they're seeking accommodations. Great. So what is the process in order to determine if a student is eligible for accommodations? Sure. Um, three simple steps. Number one, self-identify. So this means that um, as new students, you would, I, you would connect with our office um, and identify yourself as a student who has one of the conditions that I mentioned um, a moment ago. Um, so you self-identify. Uh, we like you, the student, to identify yourself, although sometimes with first-year students, it's a parent or guardian who contacts us. Number two, complete a simple one-page student intake form. It gives us a little bit of information about you um, and a bit of your history if you've had accommodations previously and tells us a little bit more about the accommodations you're seeking in college. Number three um, is setting up a face-to-face -face appointment with myself or our, one of our two other professional staff for an intake appointment, and that appointment lasts 45 minutes to an hour. That appointment occurs once we have your um, student intake form and we have documentation related to your disability. Great. What sort of services and support is available here at Worcester State for students? Sure, so for students who are registered with Student Accessibility Services, um, we have um, accommodations based on eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. So some students receive educational accommodations, some have other accommodations, which I believe we'll get into in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, students can meet with professional staff or graduate students on a weekly basis or every other week basis. Um, staff will work with students to help them learn self-advocacy skills and learn the ropes around the university, particularly for a first-year student. It can be a little overwhelming going from a high school setting to a college setting. So we like to assist students um, in some ways being an ambassador to their new environment. Great. Uh, if a student uh, was to have had an IEP or a 504 plan, how would that apply to Worcester State? What a great question. Um, so I want to debunk a myth, a myth sure. that's out there. An IEP or a 504 plan does not automatically transfer to college. Uh, it provides helpful information about a history of accommodations, but the federal regulations and schools' obligations are really different in high school mm -hmm. and in college. For example, some students in high school with an IEP or a 504 plan may have modifications in their curriculum, mm -hmm. and they may have less rigorous um, uh, work assignments than their peers. In college, accommodations are all about leveling the playing field. So every student and every class is expected to achieve the same in terms of the course curriculum. Mm -hmm. So that's an important difference. Um, we will accept an IEP 
and the accompanying testing or a 504 plan as part of a student's documentation relative to their disability. Um, and uh, lastly, um, we, we want students who have an IEP or a 504, I want to strongly encourage any student with either of those documents to please register with us because you've been used to some accommodations in high school and uh, that's a good sign that you may benefit from support in the transition. Great. Uh, what sort of accommodations are available for students? Uh, first of all, um, accommodations are determined on an individual basis. So I, we, we don't say if your diagnosis is, for example, dyslexia, then you would be eligible for the following accommodations. Sure. So they're determined on an individual basis. Academic is the most common, mm -hmm. and the most common amongst academic accommodations are extra time for tests and uh, reduced distraction testing area. We have, based on an individual's um, disability and their challenges, some of the other common accommodations would include alternative format textbooks um, and audio taping lectures. Great. Housing is another form of accommodations, and again, this is on an individual by individual basis. Um, some students, based on their medical condition, for example, may need a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And some of our housing options have sure. kitchens, not mm -hmm. all. Um, and then in addition to that, we have uh, accommodations that include ca classroom locations and classroom furniture. Great. And those are the major ones. Excellent. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the review process for accommodations? Sure. Um, so regarding educational accommodations, uh, the three of us professional staff have a weekly intake review meeting. So we review all students' documentation, what the students are asking for as far as accommodations and what we as professional staff think are appropriate. Um, and then we get back to the student who's applied for services and let them know their accommodations. Mm -hmm. For housing accommodations, there's a housing-based accommodations committee uh, with health services, counseling services, res life, um, and housing in our office, and that group reviews all of those applications. Um, and classroom locations and classroom furniture is an internal uh, within the um, student accessibility staff review when we work with the registrar and with facilities on those. Great. So all of them are a collaborative process involving the student, our staff, and other resources on campus. Awesome. I think you might have just answered this, but how often are accommodations reviewed? So we do um, intake review on a weekly basis for educational accommodations. The housing-based accommodations committee meets at least four times a year, and they review requests in between those meetings. Great. Uh, are there any new initiatives or services being offered by Student Accessibility Services this year that you wanted to mention? Sure. So we are um, we have a peer advisory leadership program. Uh, we have it's, I'm very excited about this. We have a national a international honor society for students with disabilities here at Worcester State, Delta Alpha Pi, and some of those members are training as peer advisors. Awesome. So they're specifically working with incoming first-year students and transfers to help them in the transition and adjustment. Um, and then for the Delta Alpha Pi group, the Honor Society group, they're getting involved in some new initiatives this year. Um, so more to come about that. Awesome. That is very exciting. It is. Uh, so Fran, those are all of our questions. Uh, but you know that we do have our question wheel. So we'll let you give that a spin, and then we'll give you a random question. OK. Right, and we landed on must know. All right, so this uh, question is, what is something the, a student must know either about Worcester State or about your office specifically? Sure, I would love this question. So what students must know about student accessibility services, particularly if you've had support in high school? Um, it's really different in college. Confidentiality is key, and within the college environment, there is not the stigma that you may have experienced, uh, especially in middle school or high school. So if you have some challenge that um, may affect your academics, please come see us. Excellent. Well, Fran, thank you so much for joining me today. 
Uh, again, my name is Thomas Kelly, Director of Retention. This has been Welcome to Worcester State. Welcome to Worcester State has new episodes every week, so check them out on youtube.com slash Worcester State. Click on the playlist. Again, Fran, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, happy Wednesday. Uh, signing off from Worcester State. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>